No money, no problem. This is how to find investors. Hey, what's up guys? So I'm bringing you a video all about this very popular topic, which is no money down or not needing money to start investing in property. And this is quite a popular one because this is one of the key topics that either stops people getting started in property or it is one of the biggest headlines that trainers and gurus use to sell courses and mentorships. And there is a wider debate that if you don't have any money, should you even be looking to get into property? And is there such a thing as a no money down deal? So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I think you should do first, and I've said it so many times already on other videos. Then I'm gonna talk about if you are in a position where you could extract money out to do deals, then why you should do that and how. And then I'm gonna finish on that if you don't tick boxes A and B and you don't have any money, how to find investors, structure the right deal, and pick a winning formula for you and the investor. So the first point is definitely if you do not own your own property, you need to be making the steps to get in onto the property ladder. There is little point in us talking about anything else. Yes, you can go and do no money down deals, rent to rent, deal sourcing, but the quickest, easiest, most tax efficient, biggest profit margin, whatever you want to call it, is for you to get on the property ladder. And there are so many different ways you can do it. Now is the best time to do it. There's never been an easier time to do it. And I'll put some links to other videos where I give you more detail about this. But let's assume that you have already done that and you own your own property and you've got a job um, and you wanna start investing in property or becoming a property investor. The cheapest way for you to get money to start this is by refinancing your current home. With mortgage interest rates at an all time low and an increase looking very, very unlikely. If you've got equity in your property, then you should look to get a further advance with your existing lender or refinance onto a better deal with a lower interest rate to release some cash. And then don't use that cash to go and buy a new car, a flash TV or a new sofa. Use that money to start investing in property. And if you don't have equity, try and find a way to create some equity. Try and increase the value of your current home, whether that be through refurbishment, new kitchens and bathrooms, reconfiguring the internal layout to create an extra bedroom, or adding an extension. If you don't tick any of those boxes, then you will be sitting here thinking, how do I get started in property? And you will hear this thing called no money down deals. Now, my experience in property is there is no such thing. It's either very little money down, but you will always have to pay for something, whether that be an overspend on a refurb or half of the deposit, right through to just getting contracts made up. So there is no such thing as a no money down deal, but there is such things as very little money down. And I'm talking about if you structure it correctly and you get your numbers spot on, really the only thing that you're gonna to have to be paying for is things like the contract paperwork between you and an investor. But let's get into this, this topic of no money property investing. So if you have no money in the bank, buying properties looks like such a long way. And you may think that getting into a no money strategy, like say rent to rent, would be a better option for you. And yes, for some people in some locations targeting some markets, that may well be the case. But at some point, you're going to get to the point where you still don't have any money and you do want to start buying properties. And this is where working with an investor will open up your whole world and your eyes to a new way of buying properties. And I can only speak from my own experience because I was in this very same situation literally just like six, seven years ago. And I'd been dabbling in property as like a side hustle from my main job. I did realize that this was gonna be the way that I could now start to create some serious wealth. But I didn't have any cash and I definitely wasn't in the fortunate position where I had any savings or any money coming to me through family members. I either had to accept my position and give up 
And that would be a failure because I would have just carried on. I would have still been in the job that I was in at the time. Or start to really try and graft your way forward to getting either into a position where you have money or you have enough experience to offer someone with money a solution. And they're called investors. Now, I kind of did both. So I started buying and selling stuff from car boot sales to eBay to damage stock from home base to pay for deposits. But eventually, you even no matter how much you side hustle, you will start to run out of money if you start to buy multiple deals. So you have to get yourself into a position to work with investors. Now, the biggest things that you should do is not listen to anyone else within your existing circle and family and friends, because they will give you every single reason why people will not invest with you. And you kind of need to ignore it. You need to look further afield because in the whole wider world, there is money moving around trillions and trillions of pounds moving around between people and organizations. And it's now your job to get yourself into a position where some of that money comes to you. And you can do it in so many different ways. My advice would always be to do it in a way which is sustainable and long term. So you're not going to be in and out quickly or look to make a quick buck. One of those strategies that I used was working with investors to buy properties jointly together and to then benefit from the investment the investor has made in the deal. What I mean by that is that I would earn my money from the performance of the deal, which also is how the investor earned their money. That straight away means both your commercial interests are aligned. There is no friction and there is no conflict between the goal of the deal. An example of where this isn't the case is where a deal sourcer sells a deal to an investor because the commercial interest isn't aligned. The deal sourcer really doesn't make the money on the performance of the deal. They make their money by selling it to an investor, by charging a fee. That, for me, isn't how you get synergy with an investor and how you can ramp these things up on a larger scale. So that's really my first point, is try and find a deal, a strategy, a market, a location, whereby the performance of the asset is enough to pay you and another party. Once you've done that, you then need to reverse engineer the whole deal right through to what it will look like when it's all done and performing nicely to where it is today. That way you will get an amount of money, a total investment required. And that is what you need to obtain from an investor. And once you establish that, you can, can then go and find an investor. Now, one of my biggest bits of advice is to never go directly hunting for an investor because it's never going to work. Biggest bit of advice is to indirectly find investors. So do things that don't directly involve you getting anything back or even finding an investor. And one of the biggest examples of that is networking. So when you go to a networking event or a networking environment and you are just there to hand business cards out and find investors, Within about 10 minutes, you'd have handed them all out, you've not spoken to anyone and you'll leave and everyone who did give a business card to you will probably chuck it in the bin. So when you go to a networking event, try and find a good reason to go there, a specific networking event. If it's a property one, try and go there when you wanna learn about something. So try and reel off some questions that you're ready to ask the main speaker or anyone talking about the topic at hand. And on the flip side of that, Think about what you know and what you can give back in a networking event. And if someone asks a question, maybe how you can interpret it, the answer. And that way, you'll start to gain relationships, gain credibility and build up a network of people. And after you build that network up, it's not going to happen instantly. You're not going to get a phone call the next day with someone with bags of cash saying, yeah, here's all my money, go and buy loads of property. It's going to take time. But like a snowball effect, it will start to really ramp up and you'll get to a position where you've got more investors than you've got deals. And this sort of brings me nicely on to the point of investors. Just because you're talking to someone who potentially could be an investor doesn't mean that you should just jump into bed with them straight away. And the same is said for the first investor that says that they want to do a deal with you. Try and understand everything about that individual and their goals. And one of the biggest ways you can sort of draw this information out is to go through all of the worst case scenarios and discuss one to one what would happen in those circumstances. And very quickly, you'll find out if someone does have a problem with a certain set of circumstances that your perception is to resolve it one way, but theirs would be another way. And you can either, you can either gel and create a bond through this exercise, or you can quickly 
decide that this person isn't for you. Because there is nothing worse than losing a deal apart from doing a deal with a bad investor. When deals go wrong, which they do do, or they don't perform how you've predicted, you can do everything you can to stop them going bad. But if you've got a bad investor who can even be responsible for the deal going wrong, very quickly, it will take up and swallow up a lot of your time and cash. So one of the big learning points for me was to not just do a deal with an investor because they're there ready to do a deal with you. Then I guess finishing on actually finding the, the investor. A lot of people say, go to your family and friends. Um, I personally never did that. And I don't think I would want to do that even today because when you do a deal with family and friends, the relationship goes from a personal one to a business one. And the two are very, very different. And even if the deal goes really smoothly and you all earn a lot of money, the relationship is never the same as it was when it was just personal. And some of the relationships that you've got in your personal life should never be put at risk because the relationship is worth far more than, than any deal. Equally, I always thought thought that it was a far bigger achievement to work with an individual on a purely commercial, professional relationship than it was to do anything personal. I didn't want to call in favours or people do deals with me because they know me. I wanted people to do deals with me because of the strength of the deal and the strength of my credibility. And when you, when you focus on that side of things, the world is pretty endless in terms of number of investors and how much investment you can ever obtain. And when you do start to find a formula that works for you, it's different for everyone. Everyone's personality is different and every deal is different. You can start to really ramp it up. And then fast forward on to three, four, five, six years later, you find yourself in a position where you don't have to work with investors. You can use your own cash, but you can still choose to work with individuals. I've got some individuals that I still choose to work with today because I really like giving them a great return on their money. I like the fact that they, they want to do multiple deals with me. The relationship is fantastic. And even though it costs me a little bit of interest with these individuals, it's actually a really nice working relationship to continue to have. And it does mean that your personal cash reserves are still there should a really good deal come along that you need to move really quickly on that you could never obtain finance or even investment for. Here is my warning. Be prepared for when things do go adrift. Because even though you are working with an investor and an investor's money, and the chances are you put next to no or little of your own money towards this deal, things do go wrong. And you have to be ready to step in as the professional property person within the relationship. And I'll give you an example. If you appoint a contractor and they really let you down, and they take money and they don't buy materials or they say they've done work and they haven't done it or whatever, or they've done it wrong, you are the one who's gonna to have to put that right. And it's, I've always been of the view that once the investment pot is agreed, the investor will never be asked to put any more money into the deal. And if there is any overspend or any more money required, then we have to put that money in. And this is tested when you need additional money when things go wrong, like a contractor letting you down. And if you don't have the ability to put money into the deal, then the deal and the relationship can break down really, really quickly. So one of the biggest things to do if you don't have any money to put in is to tell the investor that right at the start. So if things do go wrong, right, right at the back of the conversation of, all of the examples that you were discussing. One of them needs to be, look, and if anything goes adrift or we do need more money, I don't have the ability to put any in. So will you be able to do that? And you can agree terms with the investor like you would a lender there and then. And it might be that the additional money if required is charged at an interest rate on top of the profit share. It can be a number of things, but it's important that you outline them right, right at the start. And I think if you go into every single joint venture or investment deal or a deal with investor with that hat on, then you shouldn't really have too many problems. And if you work through all of these situations before you even discuss anything with a brand new investor, 
you're gonna be prepared when the opportunity arises to work with someone. And that's going to mean that your chances of successful investment are much, much higher. So if you've got no money, it is no problem. There are multiple ways you can get into property. And my suggestion is you work with investors, but you use all of the information that I've given you on this video. That way you're both protected and you should be able to do more deals in the future together. But that's it from me. Hope you found the content rich, stay safe, and I'll catch you all on the next video.